five, six days. Right. Terrible flow. Now then, uh, Doctor, I want to ask you, um, when you go to Parliament, as you will tomorrow, um, what's the feeling like? Actually, it's now this is the third time I will be yeah. doing it. Um, and it's a great feeling, actually, because you know you know you're representing a lot of people. I mm. mean, we have 20 million people yeah. in this country, and 225 us of us, you know, represent the 20 million. Mm. And we try to do what is right for you know the entire 20 million population. So. It's a big responsibility, and you feel, you know, that um, I, I mean, you feel good about it. Yeah, it's 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 it's. Does uh, the enormity of your responsibility hit you when you walk in there? The national list the first time. The first time I went there as an elected MP, you know, I felt, you know, very good. Yeah, but this time, well, we are in the opposition, but. Big responsibility. Only do, do you think that the opposition responsibility is greater than when you are in government? No, I mean, well, in a democracy, there is always a government and the opposition. Yeah. And in the opposition, your job is really to, you know, be constructively critical about what the government is doing. Right. Uh, and uh, so, so your scope is limited. How to, often would they listen to you? <clears throat> I mean, last time when we were in the opposition, I was quite vocal, I was quite critical. I, I, I pointed out a whole lot of things uh, that I thought uh, were going, uh, you know, the wrong, in the wrong direction. Uh, and I think I was able to, um, you know, make them, you know, mm -hmm. take notice of uh, what I was saying. Uh, but. To answer your first question, I mean, when you're in government, your scope is bigger, you have agencies under you, you have the ability to make decisions that will, uh, you know, impact on people's lives um, and do good things for, 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 for the nation. I mean, last time I was there, I was able to deliver on a few things and, mm -hmm. and, and those deliveries I would never have been able to do if I was not in government. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ask you this hypothetical question. If you were in government, with a government with a two-thirds majority, um, what would you do? Or what would you have done differently? Or what would you have been able to do what you were not able to do? Yeah, I mean, f this time the government has um, sort of unbridled power, right? I mean, you know, they can do what they uh, planned uh, to do. Mm. There is no problem of, you know, getting others together to, you know, sort of agree with you. There is no negotiations. You do what you have to do, what you think is right. You know, I mean, in the previous um, uh, dispensation, the president was from one side, the parliament was, uh, the prime minister was from another. I mean, there conflicts uh, in There's 47 different organizations that's right here you have a clear path mm -hmm. so what do you need to do to ensure that uh, you know we build bridges among the the communities you know mm -hmm. first of all you know peace sustainable peace you know because the foundation of this nation is to ensure that we create a Sri Lankan identity mm -hmm. right so, so so they can do it the, 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 the people have given them the, the opportunity to do it. So what are they going to do with it? You know? How are we going to make sure that we as Sinhalese and Tamils and Muslims, you know, as Buddhists, as Hindus and Catholics and uh, those who follow the Islamic faith, mm. that we are Sri Lankan? You know, I think... First and, first and foremost. First and foremost. Everything else... Uh, to me, I think you, unless you have that foundation, everything else will, you know, will not uh, be sustainable. So while, so you start working on that, and then you start working on the economy because that's really the 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 pain what do point. You, what do you feel about this 1.6 trillion uh, vote on account? 
that they are proposing? I mean, I mean, there is no reason not to support it. Right. You see, because um, it is not a budget; it's just an extension of uh, the spending mm. from the budget that, uh, or the voter account that we presented. Right. You know, many months ago. Right. Because there hasn't been a proper budget for a long period of time. Actually, the budget was uh, presented. When was it? I mean, I can't even recall. Yes, so far back. So far back. Yeah. So it's just an extension. So there's and, no reason. Uh, to... Doctor Archbishop, well, obviously we are in the throes of another, uh, yet another uh, power crisis, and um, there are sort of one-hour uh, slots and so on. Um, what do you feel? I mean, a, even in the previous government, we have not had any new. Uh, new power stations come up, new, no new generation, um, and a, a half-baked almost attitude towards uh, renewable energy. And over the years, successive governments have never addressed this problem of uh, relying on emergency power, which is very, very, very expensive. Um, where do you think the fault lies? This is a very, very complex issue. Um, you know, first of all, you know, I didn't expect this to happen. You know, there, there was no forewarning that, you know, the whole country is going to be out of power for yeah. you know, eight, nine hours. Neither I know 21 yeah. million other people. Yeah, so um, nobody expected this, right? So. Um, how did it happen on the day the minister uh, took office? Mm. I mean, was it sabotage? Well, you, you know, know, as I said yesterday, I'm no, I'm no Jeffrey Archer, uh, but I, you know, I love the stories, and this is so fertile for any uh, wannabe author because it's made in heaven. The president's uh, elected. A few weeks later, we had the uh, Swiss affair. Uh, the parliament is elected. Uh, within people, it's reported as one of the uh, fairest, safest elections in contemporary times. And before that parliament can sit, uh, we have um, a, a, a very significant uh, power cut uh, encompassing the whole island. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, um, I found it really odd. Uh, the statement issued by uh, the Ceylon Electricity Board that uh, because they had no control over the uh, connection of uh, renewables to the grid, mm. that uh, you know they were unable to uh, stabilize the grid. Mm. Uh, that somehow feels unacceptable. Mm. Uh, and and um, then immediately the next sentence is. Well, we need to build another 300 megawatts of coal, or you know, uh, maybe even more, maybe mm. two more uh, coal stations or coal uh, power plants. I and mean, nobody is building uh, new coal uh, generating. Uh, what happened to all minutes? those LNG uh, proposals that came in during uh, the Yarpalana time? Exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, I once was sitting in the back. Uh, uh, in the meeting room, and I just couldn't believe my ears when I heard a person say, "Look, you know the uh, the bid was in the box, uh, but they forgot to actually, uh, you know, total up the 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 bid value." Yeah. And they had a, what do you call those things? Uh, a pen drive. Pen drive, and the pen drive we use the pen drive to the computer, and it 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 didn't work. And they said it. I heard them say it. Yeah. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And then, like that, it just and they went didn't on allow them to bring another laptop in. They didn't yeah. bring them allow to bring another laptop in. And so, so, so these are not politicians. These are officials. Exactly. Right. I mean, so you know, this so-called electricity mafia. I mean, it's no myth. No, it's absolutely no myth. It's no myth. I mean, it happens. So. So there are competing interests, obviously. You know the the emergency power producers. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I had to sit on a cabinet subcommittee uh, when uh, in the previous government they wanted to purchase emergency power, 
and they were going to bring a couple of barges and connect it to the grid. And, uh, you know, I was one person who openly opposed mm. and wrote in that, even though I was not in cabinet, I was uh, sort of co-opted to that uh, cabinet committee and I completely opposed it. Mm -hmm. I said, no, you cannot do it this way, right? And the cost was so high. Uh, my point is, uh, you know, these competing interests want to stop people from building renewables, building solar, building wind, right? Um, and then, uh, you know, rely on A, uh, coal generation, and B, uh, emergency power uh, procurement. When the Auditor General uh, made, a, made a bit of a fuss um, about uh, the loss of power, uh, the distribution losses actually, in uh, Gaul, um, which is under LECO, um, the, they did take some action, but what they did is they made it all up. And when thereafter, uh, when there was uh, some uh, another proposal uh, to save on the distribution losses, um, they uh, they were caught out because they couldn't uh, they they couldn't support it because uh, the transformers were not metered and so on and so forth. There's so many excuses, but they were caught out. So you see, uh, they just make things up as they go along. You see, something that has to be done which uh, during our government also was not done, and previously to that, the previous government also didn't do it, is to have a transparent merit order dispatch mechanism. I mean, listen to me. See, you need to decide from which generating plant you're going to pr procure the, the power, right? Yeah. Now, if I buy from a plant that is costing me uh, 25 rupees a unit, as opposed to one that is costing me 20 rupees a unit, yeah. obviously there is going to be a 5 rupee savings per unit, and when you actually calculate it at the end of the day, yeah. you're looking at billions of rupees. right? So, there is no transparent merit order dispatch system in the CEB. And the PUCSL, that is the Public Utilities Commission, yeah. has been telling the CEB, look, you need to do this for, for not for you know months, but years. But mm -hmm. it never happens. So, so when it is uh, non-transparent, you yeah. can make anything up. So it is about the purchase of power uh, that uh, one needs to be really uh, uh, careful about. And thank you very much for your questions on uh, 0772 300 305 uh, by SMS. And um, I'll take some uh, when a few more come in. Um, Dr. Asha, um, there are several um, things going on, but uh, over successive governments, uh, they've never been able to sort out a, uh, a stable power supply. So the security of our power supply, nobody's really paid any attention. We have a president who's uh, sort of got a track record in terms of delivery, in terms of security, because of the war and so on. And, and yet we've had this power cut. Now then, all the time when you read the exposés in newspapers and you listen to uh, special reports on television and so on, there appears to be corruption of all sorts going on. Wouldn't it be a good idea for the government, or the president even, to have a sort of a compliance person? Yeah. Could be a minister, it could be an officer, whatever you want to call it. Who cares about a title as long as that department, that person's job is to ensure that everything is complied with? Yeah, um, certainly, of course. I mean, the I think the most corrupt uh, sector is the power sector. I think that's where most corruption takes place. Um, and um, you see, the, for instance, the controllers uh, department, like for instance in the US, yeah. you know, you have these checks and balances. And even in, 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 in our own uh, system, uh, you have the parliamentary committees that can look into, uh, you know, the goings on of uh, government agencies 
uh, and you know it can be uh, sort of then uh, you know acted upon. Yeah. Uh, and what we have seen in the past is uh, you know lukewarm type response to the, the findings, mm -hmm. you know the exposes that we see in the papers. Uh, what happens to these things? You know, they they just die, uh, usually a natural death. I mean, no, nobody has been really seriously taken on mm. uh, on the multiple allegations of corruption in the power sector. It's right throughout, you know. Right throughout. It is, it's not uh, the the preserve of any one government. No. Or party. No. It's, it's right throughout. Right throughout. Um, Yet, when we look at uh, South Korea, uh, they've actually jailed four, not one, two, or three, but four uh, presidents of the country. I believe that they've still got two uh, former presidents still serving time, um, which means that whilst they were developing their country, remember at one point South Korea was their per capita GDP was less than Sri Lanka. And uh, they, whilst the economy was growing, so was their rule of law and their justice system was also great getting stronger by the day which now results in what we see um, so therefore i'm going to ask you this question i've i, I, I it keeps coming back to haunt us the bond matter do you think that there'll ever be any resolution I mean, there ought to be, right? I mean, this was... Well, there ought to be, yes. With the way it's going, you know, they used to sit almost daily, and now it seems to be stuck in some, some abyss. I call it an abyss of despair. <laughs> I mean, there needs to be an end to it. I mean, people are expecting the, uh, the, the um, uh, judiciary to complete, uh, you know, what they've started. I mean, governments can't, I mean, it's not a political job. Yeah. I mean, it's a job of the, 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 the judiciary. It is a judicial job. Yes. Right? Now, uh, you sound almost like um, uh, our dear Minister of Justice, who was here uh, a couple of shows ago. Um, and uh, he said, Mr. Ali Sabri, he said, look, the Ministry of Justice can't interfere. The AG is an independent body and you know they'll take care of it but then it begs the question why on earth does the president put it in his manifesto if he, he says i will ensure well according to his justice minister he can't ensure anything yeah all what he can ensure is that the process goes forward yeah right i mean obviously a politician can't interfere in the judiciary correct right even though it has happened in the past we know yeah and i hope that is in the past and not in the present and in the future. You know, I hope uh, Mr. Ali Sabri is going to be able to clean up the, 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 the you know, he, he has said, you know, some of the most corrupt places is in the judiciary, in the courthouses, yeah. yeah. you know, the court registrar and things like that. So I hope he actually goes and cleans the place up. But what he can do is to make sure that the judiciary is able to carry on its duties without any obstacles by this, uh, the, 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 the political um, authorities. Mm -hmm. So if you can let that happen, uh, hopefully then we can see a conclusion uh, but to this long, I, I, long I, I, thing. In spite of all that, and in spite of uh, uh, the fact that we've got a President's Council, uh, a practicing one until he took on uh, and accepted this position as the Minister of Justice, I think we, uh, the, the public can safely believe that there will be no resolution in terms of some of the cases that we've, uh, which has become part of uh, Sri Lanka's history. Something like Wasim Tajuddin, uh, Lasanta Vikramutunga, Pragit Ekneligoda, uh, you know, whichever way. You know, you, you know, since you brought it up, I mean, Ali Sabri President's Council appeared, uh, you know, on some of those cases, yeah. you know, uh, for the defense, obviously, yeah. right? Now, I don't know how he's going to look at those cases as the Minister of Justice, hmm. you yeah. know? 
So, I mean, it's up to him to ensure that, like he said, you know, he makes sure that uh, the system goes forward and what needs to be done uh, gets done. The separation of powers as the Minister of Justice, the Attorney General's Department. Yeah, I mean, that was his previous life. I mean, yeah. you can't blame him for that. No. I mean, you know, I'm looking forward to Ali Sabri as the the Minister of Justice, yeah. you know, and, and uh, we have faith in him. I mean, he's a decent gentleman and we believe that uh, he will uh, do what he uh, has said he's going to do. Um, and uh, if uh, that happens, uh, good. And what do you foresee for Sri Lanka in terms of our economy? Uh, every, every day, a day doesn't go by when we get messages asking us when will the airport open and so on because people are obviously desperate. Uh, I don't think many people appreciate that so many Sri Lankan uh, workers <coughs> sorry, um, depend on the tourism industry directly or indirectly. I mean, I was just looking at the numbers. The latest available is uh, up to June. Uh, the central bank has issued the latest uh, balance of payments report. Uh, tourism is down 50%, right? So we are less than a billion dollars for the first six months, uh, whereas it was two billion dollars last year, right? Um, and I was talking to a, 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 a daughter of a friend of mine uh, yesterday, and she said, Uncle Harsha, the entire hotel is closed here. <laughs> Other than COVID, uh, you know, quarantine, quarantine guys, uh, no one uh, in the hotel. So, and I asked her when she thought this place, you know, fairly big 300 room or 250 plus room place was going to open. She said, they have no idea. So, <clears throat> not just the direct revenue uh, yeah. to hotels, but all the guys who are relying on um, sort of tourism indirectly, whether they be tourist guides, you know, drivers, you know, people who sell various things to the, the, the tourists, the cafes, the restaurants, the whole thing is down, right? So there is going to be a long recovery. Uh, in the tourism uh, sector, even though I must say we are um, happy to note that the exports are picking up. Uh, I was not expecting, honestly, to see a billion dollar uh, export uh, volume for last month, uh, which is good, which says that uh, you know our orders are being filled, and I heard some of the big apparel companies have now um, orders going through towards the end of the year almost. So if that happens and you know the factories start working, exports start picking up, um, hopefully then uh, we will recover faster than we had expected on some, uh, some sectors. Mm. Uh, but then again, you see what uh, you were just saying about expat workers and so yeah. on. You know, I was just, uh, you know, reading somewhere that uh, even in, you know, rich Middle Eastern countries, they are finding it difficult to meet salary payments and so on. And they are cutting down on their expat workers. Uh, and remittances are down at least by a quarter uh, thus far. So it is going to be a difficult balance. Um, I heard uh, Mr. Cabral, now Minister Cabral, saying that you know they would want to stabilize the exchange rates and interest mm. rates, which is a good thing to do. But you saw today there's so much pressure on the currency. You know the currency depreciated quite a bit today, um, and uh, as they lift the uh, sort of the very tight controls on the imports, there is going to be greater demand for the U.S. dollar. And with that, we will see the currency sliding further. But as somebody said, the US dollar is very weak right now, right? And even in a weak US dollar scenario, uh, the rupee will continue to slide against that. 
So there is going to be quite a challenge uh, for a government to try and see whether they can really stabilize the currency at these rates mm -hmm. or whether it will depreciate further. Um, we've only got a minute. I don't know yeah. if you can answer this. Uh, uh, we was asking, why didn't the LNG go through in the last government, the LNG project? Uh, puzzles me. Faraz puzzles me. Puzzles you indeed. We, maybe we should raise this up when, uh, on Face the Nation one of these days. Uh, because I also, uh, another uh, viewer is saying, uh, the General Electric Company proposed 600 megawatts without any investment on the part of the government of Sri Lanka, accepting a buyback agreement. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. But, uh, Harshad Isabel, thank you very much for coming on the program. And I hope you keep fit because uh, perhaps we can uh, have you on Face the Nation. Thank you. Thank you for us. And that's the way it was on uh, News 9 Live. Take care. Have a wonderful evening ahead of you. And of course, as always, God bless. Mm -hmm.